Hello, and welcome to the October 2023 Economic and Market Update, presented by Commonwealth Financial Network. My name is Brad McMillan, and I'm Commonwealth's Chief Investment Officer. September saw market pullbacks across the board as interest rates rose significantly. The U.S. indices were down for the second month in a row in the mid-single digits, with the NASDAQ doing the worst. International markets also pulled back, with developed markets down slightly less than the U.S., and with emerging markets doing about the same. Even fixed income was down for the month. While markets were down, though, the economy continued to chug along. Job growth remained healthy, both consumer income and spending continued to grow, and retail sales were also up strongly. While consumer confidence was reported to have dropped, when you dig into the data, people continue to feel pretty good about the present, even though they're worried about the future. This has been the case for a while now, even as growth continued, so it's not something to get too concerned about. On the business side, the news was also good. Both service and manufacturing confidence ticked up, and business investment came in strong. Overall, for the economy, we're still in a pretty good place. The inflation data also continued to get better. While headline inflation was up on an increase in oil and gas prices, core inflation continued to drop to a multi-month low. With the housing market continuing to weaken, that trend is likely to continue. And that mixture of continued economic growth and improving inflation is a good combination. But even though the economic news is good, markets pulled back on political worries as a government shutdown loomed, and even more importantly, on a rise in interest rates. While the politics are settled for the moment with a temporary deal in place, the interest rate problem remains. While we're likely close to the end of the Fed's hiking cycle, markets are realizing that they're not likely to cut anytime soon, and the rates are likely to stay higher for longer. And that drove a sharp increase this month, with the yield on the 10-year Treasury up from about 4.1% to 4.6%. Higher rates typically mean lower values, and that's what we saw. And on top of everything else, last month was September, typically the worst month of the year. So with everything against us, it's kind of surprising the results weren't even worse. But that also suggests the rest of the year may well be better. With the economy continuing to grow, the fundamentals are still solid. While rates are up, if the Fed stops as expected, they're likely close to their peaks and could even come down. And while September is usually a weak month, the last quarter is usually stronger. With a solid foundation and with headwinds abating or even turning to tailwinds, the rest of the year may be much better. None of this is guaranteed, of course, and risks remain, both here in the U.S. with inflation in the Congress and abroad with China, Russia, and other problems. But with this many worries seemingly priced in over the past couple of bad months, there's a lot of room for a recovery, especially as the fundamentals are still solid. Despite everything, we're still in a pretty good place. That's not a bad way to start the fall. That's it for this update. Thanks for watching. Join me in November for the next one, but until then, be sure to check my blog, The Independent Market Observer, for more timely comments. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay healthy. And have a great fall.